Yo, 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 what's happening, everyone? Welcome to Club Collab. I'm Max Jimenez, and I got my co-host here. You're on mute, bro. What's up, everybody? What's cracking on a Tuesday? Real Ryan Overcash here. Ready to go? Let's go, baby. I'm super excited today, man. I've been waiting for this thing all weekend. We got some people on here already ready to go. Leo's in the house. Sonia's here. She's saying, let's go. Joseph, what's up, man? Uh, Everett, what's going on? What's up? Mariana's in here. She's one of our virtual team members. Uh, Leo's in here already dropping questions, man. These people can't wait. I love it. I'm excited, man. I can't wait to bring uh, Mike on. Listen, before we bring Mike on and let him loose and go get after it is, uh, we're going to make some a couple announcements. Uh, we got some exciting stuff going on. Amazing stuff, man. Look at this, man. We got Daniel, Daniel in the house. What up, Daniel? We got Arnulfo's in the house. What up, Arnulfo? Appreciate you, man, for being on the call today. Annie's in here. Uh, I was in here. Marlou, all the way from Canada. That's my brother right there from Canada. We got Jamie. Guys, I'm super excited. Keep dropping the fire emojis. Bring your questions. This is a live show. Remember that. This is a live show. We need. We, we don't want to just talk at you. We want to help you, right? We can sit here and talk at you all night long, but the only way you're going to learn, the only way you're going to walk out with, with, with actionable items is – based on your questions and what you're going through right now. So before we bring on the man, the myth, the legend, cash money, Mike, what I want to do is just say really quick, what's going on Friday, Ryan? You're on mute again. Why, why are you trying to mute me? Let me let me out of my cage. Friday, guys. My, <laughs> my <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Zoom, right? is it Zoom? Yeah, live Zoom. Uh, going over the minds of buyers. What are buyers thinking to, in today's market? How are they responding? How do you keep them from bypassing your deals? And how do we really make sure that, to, to get their attention, get the deals sold in a timely, quick fashion? Uh, we're going to go over everything buyer-related Friday. Don't miss out. 3 p.m. Arizona time. It's going to be amazing. I love it. I love it. And then <laughs> Sonia said, let the man speak. He puts himself on mute, Sonia. <laughs> Guys, today, uh, one more thing is if you're not part of my face, private Facebook group, I highly recommend send me a DM. I'll get you on there. Listen, today we had two and a half hours of calls, live calls. Sonny was on there. A couple of you guys that are on here were on there, and it was just amazing. Like we were pitching what Mike is teaching us uh, right now. I'm learning from this guy. Uh, you want to stay tuned till the end. So about what I'll do is and maybe I'll put it in the in the Facebook group that we had quite a bit of people on throughout the whole two and a half hours of nothing but calls. We showed you the good, the bad, and the ugly. There's nowhere you can hide when you come to live calls. We even uh, we even called out some furus like they were tripping out, right? Furu, where the furus at? Like this is not IG. Like we're showing you what is happening. So uh, if you're not part of that Facebook group, I highly recommend it. There's so much stuff going on. And we're just going to keep adding and adding and adding. Um, and so um, uh, Sonia said, yep, was helping your dude on the phone. Yeah, she was dropping nuggets, commenting. Uh, Gabe, uh, you know, he he's new and he's learning. And that's the other thing, too, is that we're also going to start. One thing I want to start doing is getting people to actually join me on those calls so we can help you just like we were helping Gabe. Um, and that way you guys get better at acquisitions and talking to sellers, but yeah, join us Friday. Ryan said it Friday. We're having a, a, a an amazing zoom call. Ryan's going to break down, uh, the mind of a buyer and he broke down those three things. So, but without further ado, we want to bring on the man of the hour, the myth, the, the myth, the man, the legend, Mr. Cash money, Mike, let's go. What's oh, up Cash money, Mike? What's we shaking, man? We got 36 people and it's adding up brother. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. It's good to be back. I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, of course, bro. I know you've been going all day, going pretty hard, which, you know, we admire your grind. We, we admire the energy, and I really appreciate you for being on with us, bro. It's amazing. We've been we've been going since last Thursday, bro. Let's be honest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's true. Truth. <laughs> Maybe even longer than that, I believe, right? Truth, man. I've been I've – been, uh, I still got the hair on my arms still standing up from that whole Arizona trip. It was amazing, man. It was. It was definitely some. I, I believe that um, catalyst for something, right? I think there's something definitely go, that's going to go down. That uh, that uh, that I think it's going to be huge. Uh, Leo says, "Love Mike's energy." So, Mike, typically, um, you know, obviously, we're going to get into the wholesaler finance. You know, we're going to talk about you know what's happening in the market, why seller finance is so important right now. 
Um, you know, and, and then Ryan's going to talk a little bit about potentially what, uh, what, what, what we can do on the, on the disposition side. Right. Like, so, um, but before we do all that, uh, one thing I want to, you know, again, I'm going to, I'm going to keep saying this throughout the show is this is a live show. Ask your questions, drop some comments. Listen, Mike is the man that loves to answer questions just like I do, just like Ryan does. He doesn't hold anything back. So what that does, it actually, it's kind of like, um, the more questions you ask, the more Mike gets energized, right? Like he starts running faster. Like that's his energy, right? That's his, uh, what is it called? The stone of power. <laughs> He's going to end He's up taking his shirt off too. Watch it. It's going to happen. <laughs> ah! He's going to start looking. He's going to start turning green. So, uh, but Mike, thank you for being on, man. It's a really true honor. Like we always said, right? Um, so let's kick this off. So Mike, so tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, I know there's going to be people on here who have, who have heard of you, a lot of them. And there's going to be some people who are like, well, who's Mike? Why are we talking so highly of Mike? Tell us a little bit about yourself. What market are you in? What you, how long you've been in real estate and those, all that good stuff, brother? Yeah, so my name is Mike Termini. I'm originally from New York. I grew up about a half hour north of New York City. I live down in Charlotte, North Carolina now. I've been down here for about 12 years. I am a creative real estate seller finance educator inside the space. Um, I've been educating this stuff for quite a while. Um, I teach a lot of, uh, a lot of the guys that you see out there on Instagram, some of the bigger dogs, even at like the wholesale level. Um, and, uh, I recently decided to come out from behind the shadows and kind of give all of this knowledge to people who kind of need it in this pivoting market. Right. I mean, there's such a big change going on. So I decided to come on out here. I, um, I, uh, own, manage and rent a bunch of property out here. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's what I do where I'm from and got three kids, got a beautiful wife. I love it, man. I love it. Um, one thing that I, that I always tell people is that, um, you know, you have to be careful who you learn from, right? Especially right now with, with the times changing and all that's happening. And one thing that I, that, that I like about you, Mike, is your experience, right? You've been, I mean, you've been doing, I think you've been doing real estate now for what, for 20 plus years, I believe. Correct. Yeah. Right at about 20 years right about 20 years has your as far as the your real estate career has it always been seller finance did you start right out the gate doing seller finance hell no i wish i had started with seller finance i i kind of look back and i'm kicking myself in the ass for all that property that i sold sounds like um, the conversation we had that thursday right <laughs> yeah man i i am i'm i'm crying at some of the stuff that i sold um, when I first got into it, I was just like anybody else, right? I was just confused. I didn't know which way to go, what I should be doing. I wound up getting a broker's license. This is when I was still up in New York, thought I wanted to be a real estate agent and then mm -hmm. realized I couldn't stand walking in the houses with a buyer and ooing and eyeing over bathrooms and kitchens and all this other shit. I was like, mm -hmm. get me out of here. Um, so I started, I started looking for more investment type stuff, believe it or not. I don't know if my brother is in here or not, but my brother was just on the live him and I, um, what really kind of kicked it off was him and I had flipped a house together on a, on a block that I kind of lived on at the time. Um, and from there on in, I, um, I wound up taking a bunch of education. I've been in a bunch of different businesses. I went broke a few times. Uh, been through a foreclosure, a bankruptcy, a tax audit. Um, so I've sat in a pile of shit for a really long time. Uh, but what was so great about those things happening to me, you know, at that time, it felt like I was I was never going to get out of it. But now that I look back, I, I am so blessed and so happy that I kind of went through that stuff. It was an, a major, major education um, so yeah. And I'm, I, I mean, I've seen all kinds of markets too, right? I've seen up markets, down markets, sideways markets, markets where it's real kind of, um, you don't understand what's going on. Right. Uh, I didn't understand, um, how money worked inside the world, right? Like mm -hmm. what, what kind of fiscal policy meant and right. what that meant for interest rates and how that affected us as investors. Um, right. But after kind of walking through that and and uh, and going through some stuff, I learned it pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I think we all. I uh, mean, for myself too, right? Like i i didn't I didn't start real estate till uh, back in 2015. But obviously, I went through the same thing in 2008. You know, lost the house, mm -hmm. uh, bankruptcy, all that stuff. I think uh, similar, not not as uh, high low as you, right? As as far as the losses, but definitely understand that. So, um, 
with that being said, because you did not start doing the seller finance, but it seems to like you've attached to that strategy um, more high level than I've seen, honestly, brother. Like I've seen some people that that are doing it, some people that have talked about it. We got a very good friend of ours that came in and taught our, our guys in the office, right? But I don't know what it is. There's something, I don't know if it's your passion for it. Um, I don't know if you saw something a little more deeper than what other people did. What is that thing that drives you towards seller finance, bro? Man, I love that question. And thank you for asking that question because I haven't been asked that question like at that kind of way before. Yeah. It's totally, I am, I am blindsided by how the banks make money. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely sidelined that we could do it for ourselves. Okay. Uh, That's, that's, that's what really pushes me. I'm like, holy shit, we can do this for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, well, how do we do it? Right. Everything is about the why and the how, but it's, it's really understanding and it's not the sexiest subject, right? It's banking and it's interest rates and it's amortization tables. And it's like, who the hell (laughs) wants to learn that? And who the hell wants to learn about tax and who the hell wants to learn about debt? But in my life, I've been taught that tax was a bad thing. Mm-hmm. In my life, I taught I was taught that you shouldn't accumulate debt. And when I learned to love taxes and love debt and understood that, whole, oh, my God, that's how the big money is made. It's like I can't wait to show everybody because wow. I, I remember when I first learned it, I had I had come back. I had another whiteboard and I had my wife there and I go, <laughs> I'm like, look at what we can do. Look at what we can do. Look at where the money goes. <laughs> and she was like, slow down, slow down, slow down. I was like, no, 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 no. I get it. Like, I get it. I, I get it. And more importantly, I could show other people how to get it. I, I love that, man. Yeah, that, I think, I think that's where you attach the Ryan. Were you going to say something? I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just coming, you know, just uh, the the passion that he has. I mean, that's that's what attracted me to him, right? Was just the passion that he has for the absolute love. You are in love with this and you love it fanatically. And then the way that you're able to relay it to your audience, to me, to Max, I mean, it makes it even even better. So I see why you're as good as you are at what you do because of how you feel about it. And every I mean, you're already full of energy. You light up just like max lights up when he closes deals or gets on the phone with sellers you guys are like two little kids playing man it's so awesome to see that's exactly what it feels like i feel like i'm out here playing that's amazing man thank you for sharing that because i I wanted to you know get in the mind of uh getting your mind when it comes to that because like i said i i've seen i've been around people um talk about it uh but there is a different level when i see you teach it show it and one of the things that I think when you were here, right, you came to the house and stuff when we started talking about this and, and then we went to the event was that this is the game changer. This is where wealth starts to happen. Right. When you start to get into these strategies, when you start to uh, 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 develop the skills to start. And when we talked about some of the older cats in the game, I think you brought that up. Right. Some of the Robert Allen, some of those cats that, you know, that uh, no money down type of strategies. Right. That's where you go from from, you know, wholesaling, very transactional innovations, very transactional where seller finance is a continuous repetition that pays you throughout a certain time frame. And I love your phrase. The money's in the time. Talk about that transition from that mindset, because uh, there's a lot of wholesalers on here right now. I can see that already. Not an easy transition to make <clears throat> at all, because, again, we're so accustomed to cash now. Right. We click the mouse and Amazon has the package at our front door two hours later and it's not there in two hours. We get pissed off. Right. And it's this it's this cash now to kind of like this long term mindset that when you realize and it's not easy to do, but when you realize that the money is in the time and the money is in the in the refinance component of seller finance, when you pull your money out of these assets and you never really take the money. You just, you operate in the right corporate structure. You get out of society as a personal human being or a sole proprietor that gets his ass kicked in taxes. 
you mm. learn how to operate like a business out here. And yep. because we operate like a business out here, we get all of the benefits that the government gives to us. Damn. So as we're trying to avoid paying taxes, the tax code is a literal roadmap on how to avoid paying taxes, not evade. Mm-hmm. You don't want to evade. There's a difference. Taxes. There's a difference. <laughs> There's a difference, man. You wind up in an orange jumpsuit if you evade taxes. <laughs> but if you if you if you follow the roadmap, the tax code says, "Hey, real estate is the greatest investment in this country. Play by the rules. We make the rules." You play by the rules and you're going to get wealthy. Damn. That's freaking amazing, bro. I, I, it's, it's, you're, you're right about that. Like, I think the transition um, is hard. I know this personally because all I've done the last three and a half years, maybe four years now, right, is wholesale, 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 wholesale. And I know that what I know that we talked about this, right? When you were here, I told you in 2019, we pulled this list of, 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 of a multifamily. And I can and I, I did the count, by the way, and it was over like it was close to 15 multifamily units that we wholesale. <laughs> and, and, no, it's and, all good because you, you wouldn't even be here if that didn't happen. So I'm glad that, you know, I'm glad we're all here together now, Max. Thanks, bro. I'm not I'm not. Uh, you know, it hurts. I, I almost want to cry. You guys can't see me. But but anyways, it, it, it's funny, though, because we make good spread on it. And then, and then Mike's like. What spread? Well, what's a good spread? What's a good spread? He called me out on it, right? He yeah, he got out. all puffy. <laughs> what are you talking about, spread? <laughs> but you know, you're right. Maybe if I would have, if if I didn't, you know, if I would have done what we're talking about today back then, who knows, right? Maybe it would have been different. The timing is is right for everything, um, and that's why you know the transition is difficult because of again what you just said about the the, the Amazon example. I love that. But I think at some point is you do have to look at your life and say, do you want to continue, right, this rat race? Do you want to continue? And, and, and honestly, one thing that hit me hard when we went to lunch was you said, we're running out of time, right? Let's be honest. I don't care if you're 30 or if you're, if you're 40 or you're 50. Like, time's not coming back, right? Like, that clock continues to, to tick. Can you talk a little bit about that, how transitioning, just if you can get in that mindset, you know, where seller finance can help kind of, kind of, uh, re- not reverse it, but slow that time down. If someone that's, you know, in their 30s, someone that's, that's, you know, that's starting out. Yeah. So like early on in your career, right. It's all about stacking cash. Right. And you think that's the best thing, right. You get, I mean, everybody's goals are different too. I think as you get older, you get to be my age. I'm probably the oldest guy inside this room right now. I sit right at 48 years old. And when you start to get up in age, your mindset starts to change because you don't really know, right? I mean, I'm not the healthiest guy in the world. Obviously, Ryan hasn't given me the diet yet. That's going to change. It's coming this weekend. I knew you were going to bring that up. It's I'm coming. So hey, on, right? You know Ryan, what he told me, Mike? You know what he told me? He says he's, he's creating a course. Just click on the please. link. <laughs> Send me the link because he's I got to turn it into a full root. A full root. <laughs> <laughs> when yeah, you brother. get. When you start getting uh, when you start getting a little bit older, you start to realize that the most important things in your life are time, right? Yeah. So, if the most important thing in your life is time, and I've got a dad who's sick right now, um, wow. and Sorry I've watched, yeah, thank you. I've kind of watched people, right? And I'm and I'm looking at my old man, and my old man was so ambitious, right? He was so mm-hmm. ambitious. He had a lot of property, Max. He had a wow. lot of property, but he didn't have patience, you know. Right. And, and I look back and I wish my old man had been more patient with, with himself and took, took better care of himself. And I'm not, trust me, I, I'm, I'm a work in progress. But when you start thinking about time, you start thinking about how you want to enjoy your time and you don't want to be stacking cash wholesaling when you get to be my age, right? You want to be buying stuff. You want to be taking advantage of everything that's available to you in the real estate space and using it to your advantage so that you can sit down on your beach or in your mountain house or wherever you want to do, wherever you want to be, and not have to worry about money. And what seller finance provides is it provides a steady stream of income 
It provides amazing tax benefits. It provides leverage and real estate in general provides appreciation, right? So when you take advantage of, of all of those, there's this great, there's this great saying that first you buy, then you borrow, then you die. So you buy, die. you borrow, you die. And it all comes down to a legal right. uh, structure so that at the end of our lives, however we structure this stuff, we can control this real estate from the grave, mm-hmm. literally, right? right? Because, you know, people use generational wealth pretty freely, but if you're not training those kids, as soon as you, as soon as you clock out, they're selling your property. Yeah. So yeah. in order to keep, in order to, in order to keep the longevity and keep the work, you know, uh, of what we're doing here, um, you know, on into the future is, is, is just trying to make it so that it's easier when you get down the road. Right. And you can do that very, very easily with real estate. So, yep. Got it. I love that, man. I think, and, and you know, I, I, I wanted to, I wanted to kind of, I wanted to, um, go this way with the conversation because I believe for, you know, with, with wholeheartedly that this can change some your life. This can definitely, this, this, this strategy, right? So I wanted to line that up to now say this, because I think you laid a good, really good foundation, right? The way you start it, why seller finance, why you have so much passion for it and the things that people do. Um, it's just real estate, but also it can change your life, right? It, it, from going very transactional. Um, how does someone make that, that transition, Mike? How, 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 if someone was thinking right now, like, how do I start pitching seller finance? How do I start having that conversation with sellers? Um, you know, how do I, how do I do that? So I can get to that point where, of everything you just talked about right now. Yeah. I think, I think in life, right. If you want to fast track anything, you get around like-minded people, right. And you get yep. around people that can help you inside the space. You can spend 20 years walking through the mud like I did. Right. And you can, yep. and you can walk to walk and ultimately, even if you get around people that can help you, they're going to want to force you to walk that walk. Yep. so that you can experience it for yourself. But if you want to fast track it, you get around people who can help you. Um, and, and with seller finance specifically, all, all it really, all, all creative real estate is and seller finance is, is in my opinion, an opportunity. Right. It's, it's an opportunity to look at things differently, to see things differently. And when you, look at things a little bit differently, they, they change, right? There's a saying that when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And that makes sense. Yeah. Right. When you change the way you look at things, the things you're actually looking at change. So, but what's so great about seller finance is that it's not some far fetched idea that you have to learn from somebody and go, all right, I've got to have it all together. This is literally if anybody on this Zoom has bought a primary home or bought any piece of property in their entire life, it's that process in reverse. So rather than Ooh. us having to go to a bank to get a loan, to qualify for a loan, we are going to use the seller's equity as a loan mm-hmm. and all all the equity is, is the amount of cash that you have inside that house. That's all I love it, is. it. Right, right. No, I like that. And, and I like that you said that, right? It's an opportunity. Uh, I think, uh, you know, it's if you look at it that way, having that strategy and, and presenting that opportunity, it's again, going back to it, it, it works for the seller because you're helping them in multiple ways. Ryan, did you want to say something? You kind of want to jump on? Oh, no, I was just like what he was saying. I was just nodding. Nothing yet. Perfect, man. Jump in whenever you want. Um, so, man, I love this, right? Uh, it's more an opportunity. So, how do we? How do we? Uh, how do we? If we're looking at at a, at a deal, right, and we want to get away from, uh, you know, we w- one of the things with wholesale, right, is you typically need you, you typically have to get at a certain discount, depending on your market, depending on your strategy, depending on your 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 disposition, all that stuff. You know, you got to get at a certain discount so it makes sense for for the deal, right? So you can display it and, and sell it out to your buyers. On the seller finance, you're 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 overpaying for properties. Some people don't understand that process, 
and 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 so maybe you're give, you're get, giving them what the seller wants, but sometimes you're overpaying. Um, maybe there's some people on here that don't really understand that process of why would you overpay for a property? You want to break that down and talk a little bit about that, and then we'll give an example of that. Yeah. So let's pull it back just a just one sure. tad and and just and just talk about three different cups here. I love right. it. Yep. So so in any business, we're gonna need prospects. This is really where Ryan like excels, all right? Yeah. Is like putting the process together, right? Is three different cups. You're gonna need prospects, you're gonna need leads, and you're gonna need conversions, right? So understanding what you're looking for is gonna be super important, right? And Ultimately, you're going to prospect whether you're a wholesaler or you're doing novations, you're doing subject to, you're doing um, seller finance, you're doing any kind of a hybrid deal. The prospect, the prospecting process, it does not change. You don't have to pull specific lists. You just heard Max say, hey, we had two deals today or, or, or a deal today and a deal the other day. They didn't pull a specific seller finance list. They were prospecting for wholesale. And when they realized that it couldn't work on wholesale or got some pushback, Max pulled a tool out of his tool belt and said, hey, hey, I can do this. How do you feel about this? And all of a sudden he got a response, right? So now the prospect now turns into a lead. And now, once the lead is in there, we now need to convert the lead, right? Now, since I know that money is a big motivator for people, I create motivation. As everybody else out there looks for motivation, I create it. And I create it by offering more money. But in exchange for offering more money, I need time. Okay. Now for some people, they go, well, what does that mean? I've got to bring it back just a tad again, right? So now we have prospects, leads, and we have conversions. We now know that we can give the sellers exactly what they want. We can overpay them. So that's ultimately going to make us stand out from the pack, right? Like if there's, if there's 20 of us and me, you, and Ryan are inside that 20 and 17 have to buy them at a discount, us three are already going to stand head and shoulders above all of our competition. So I like to call this the competition eliminator, right? We go in there, we literally clear the room out and we're able to offer a solution that not many people can offer. Right. Yeah. So when I say that we need time, we have to understand one thing that in order for us to do seller finance, we have to have a goal of wanting to hold property for ourselves. You just heard us talk a little bit about time and how we're all running out of time. We've all got a reservation. We ain't getting that. No, none of us are getting out of here alive. Yeah. 100%. We're, all, we're all going to the same spot, hopefully. And we're going to do some deals on the other side. I don't even know, but we're all getting out of here. Right. Yep. So, if there is the ultimate goal of being able to own property and, and, and kind of turn the volume down at a certain time, right? Seller finance is that opportunity. It, yep. That is the thing that it provides, right? So Correct. when we ask for time from a seller in exchange for more money, mm -hmm. We have to understand that we have to own real estate. We've got to rent it. Real, uh, we have to own it. We have to rent it. We have to manage it. And we have to refinance that. That is so important to keep in the back of your head or else it really doesn't make sense. So you've right. got to have a long-term goal to know that you're going to hold this property. You're never going to sell the property. You know that the only way to get your money out of the property tax-free is through refinance. We know that we're going to leave it in the portfolio for our loved ones. That is the mindset. That is the mind shift, I should say. Right. Ryan's right. the mindset. I'm the mind shift. <laughs> right? I'm going to say, hey, listen, 
no more of these racks of cash. Let's, let's, let's look for the long term. Now, when we understand that we're looking for long term, what does long term mean? It means time. So now, if we're going to own it, we're going to rent it, and we're going to manage it, forget about the refinance component right now. Mm -hmm. It's what are we going to collect in rent as compared to what are we going to put out? So money in, money out. That's all seller finance is about. Yep. It's about how much money are we taking in? How much money are we putting out? We're going to work on the difference between those two amounts and depending on what we structure with the seller, because we hold the cards, we make our own interest rates, we make our own time frames, we establish our own payoff periods. I don't have to follow the rules of a bank. Yeah. I can make those for myself. Right. So again, taking everything that's right in front of you and just seeing it slightly different so that you can you can capitalize on something like that. I love that. That's the difference between seller finance and subject to, right? Like on the subject to you're stuck. Like you can't, you, you can't modify the, the rate. You can't modify the loan. You can't modify the time frame. None of that stuff where in a seller finance, you just said, right? Like it's a whiteboard pretty much for you. Correct. Um, which is amazing by the way. Uh, you, you, man, my mind's going right now, bro. Like a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> hey, you know, talk about uh, one thing real quick. I want to bring something back a little bit that you said, cause it's, cause I, I'm experienced that I'm experiencing this right now is if someone that, you know, do you want to go 20 years through the mud or do you want to connect with somebody like we connected with you and we just, we met one San Antonio, not even a month ago. Correct. And, and, and I can go ahead. Yeah, yeah, we met in San Antonio and just yeah. hit it off. And hit it off, and and that hasn't been a month. And I just just by connecting with you, like I had a whole mind shift, right? A whole mind shift of, you know, I need to start doing this ASAP. And I connected with you, and I cut. I mean, I could probably tell you, I cut ten years, five five to ten years off, easy. If that makes sense. Yeah. Ever since Mike, ever since you come into our lives, dude, every time I come and see Max, Max is always looking at the whiteboard, drawing numbers, and he's like, "Man, I am looking at real estate in such a different frame right now. It's unbelievable." And I love when I hear that from Max. I'm like, "Yeah, let's go." Yeah, I love that, and I, I, I say to people like who take my training, I'm like, "I will, I will completely change the way you look at and buy real estate for the rest of your life." completely change the way you look at it and it's and and it's and it's not that hard to figure out right you need a couple of basic skills but i mean i am i am i am honored and blessed for you to say something like that i i truly appreciate that um we're just getting started yeah i appreciate yeah, that no, of course man i know I yeah you're welcome man it's a, and i i truly mean it right um <clears throat> let me let me ask you this because i'm pretty sure guys Everyone that's on here right now, we got quite a bit of you on here, and I haven't seen too many. I, I want you to ask your questions. Start bringing up your seller finance question, the difference between, uh, you know, the 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 seller finance and sub two, all the questions that you may be itching. Mike's here to answer those questions. He's here for us. He's here for you. Um, he, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, we went on three hours uh, last week on a Zoom call, <laughs> right, for yeah. three hours on a Friday night. Um, and so, so please ask your questions. Mike is here to answer those questions. That's where we're here. It's a live show. And, uh, and there's, I'm going to say this, and I think Mike laughed at this when I said this on, on the zoom call, there are no stupid questions, only stupid people because they didn't ask the stupid question, right? We don't, we don't, we don't ask the question. So we stay, uh, you know, we don't get that knowledge. So, so we stay in the same spot. If someone is hearing you right now, Mike, because you, you, you talk a lot about seller finance. That's your niche. That's your go-to, which I love, by the way. Why not? What? Why prefer sub two over seller finance besides creating your own terms? What are some upsides? What are some downsides on both that you can talk about? Yeah, so I prefer seller finance over sub two all day. Um, I've, I've actually kind of categorized all of the deals, right? So there's five types of deals. We have a cash deal. We have right. an ovation deal. We've got a sub two deal, right. a seller finance deal, and a hybrid deal. Mm. The wholesale deal and the novation deal are what I refer to as inventory deals, right? You're not really taking over an asset. You're just flipping the contract, making great money, flipping the contract, 
and um, and that's the extent of it, right? With the with the seller finance subject to and hybrid deals, those are actual deals that you can hold for the long term. Mm. So for those of you out there that are prospecting, when you come across a seller finance deal, you come across a sub two deal, or you come across a hybrid deal, and your mindset is long term, those are the deals that are going to work for long term. Okay, a novation deal and a wholesale deal is not going to work for the long term. It's going to be right. quick money, nice stack of cash. If you're really good at closing, if you're really good at negotiating, that'll determine what kind of cash you make. Right. I, um, I prefer. So seller finance is the least risky for all parties involved. Right. Wow. We're getting, we're getting the bank. Um, excuse me, we're getting the seller to be the bank for us. So if these four walls that I'm sitting in right now has a loan on it Mm -hmm. and I don't make the payment on that loan, even though I own this property, the deed is in my name and there's a loan on this property. If I don't make the payments on the loan, who really owns the house? (laughs) They're knocking on your door, bro. You don't. <laughs> the bank does. The suits. The suits. The suits own it. The banks own it. So think about when you're explaining that to a seller. Hey, Mr. Seller, Mrs. Seller, here's the beautiful thing about this is that after I overpay you and after I make all the payments that you want me to make and after I do all the rehab inside your property, if I miss one payment, you get to get it back. You get it back I love in, in much better condition than what you gave it to me in. Right. <laughs> so it's, it, there is no risk on each side, right? Mm-hmm. We don't have to worry about a due on sale clause. We don't have to worry about insurance requirements. We don't have to worry about all the things that we have to worry about on sub two. Mm-hmm. Now, sub two if you understand seller finance, you understand subject two. Right. But to Max's point earlier, the only difference between the two is that we can't make our own interest rates. There's already a loan in place and we have to abide by that loan. Then we've got to keep it out of the eyes of the bank to make sure that they don't trigger the due on sale clause. Yep. And what has to happen in order to not trigger the due on sale clause, right? You really got to think it through when you're dealing with real estate. Mm-hmm. So I prefer subject to deals. I mean, uh, seller finance deals all day long over subject to. Right. Can you make great money at sub two? Absolutely. But you've got some hurdles to get over. Yep. Um, and then hybrid deals are obviously where there's a loan in place and then the seller is going to finance the remaining equity inside that property. Um, and those two, um, Love work well too. yeah, cool, man. We, the questions are coming in hot now. So, uh, we're going to get to some questions here really quick. Uh, so David Castillo wants to know, um, Mike, did you create your own contracts? I did not. I actually had my attorney drop all of my contracts and, uh, I give them all to you inside the training. Boom. But I do not take any responsibility for those contracts. I always give you the liability. <laughs> yeah, like anytime I start anything off, everything yeah. that I talk about in my life has been real experience stuff. Right. But yep. I always want to start with a little disclaimer that I don't I don't provide any 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 legal advice or tax advice. And um, I actually use those contracts. My students use those contracts, but I'll always advise you to bring it mm-hmm. to somebody to get it looked over. Yeah, when we did workshops, we used to do the same thing. Like, hey, we're going to give you our contracts, legal docs, but you still need to do your due diligence and see if they work in your market. And if you need to modify it for certain things, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I like what you said. Uh, I can't remember when it was, if it was on the live. It's crazy how low, how, how, how the threshold as far as wholesales to get into business, but it's the business where it has the highest uh, legality, right? Where, where things can go pretty south, uh, south pretty fast when it comes to legal stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. 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 True. Yeah. Uh, Brandon wants to know, uh, Mike, what are some benefits to share to sellers to do this type of deal with them? 
I had a guy ask me that today. Yeah. So again, it's all going to be about what the seller wants and what the seller needs, right? You'll hear Max and Ryan talk about this all the time that, you know, you are, it's, it's problem solving first and it's sales second, right? So if you're problem solving and you're, and you're, you're trying to either qualify or disqualify a seller um, as you're going through, it's the questions that you ask that's going to reveal what the, what the seller wants and what the seller needs. Mm -hmm. If you are able to come up to what the seller wants and what the seller needs, which is always going to be money, which is the reason why seller finance is so great, right? Because yep. we get around the money objection like no other strategy ever because we're able to, we are able to give more money. There are so many benefits for a seller that it's insane. Mm -hmm. But what I'll do is I'll break it down into five categories for you. I won't go through them all, but I'll give you all five categories. And I've got them in order like this. So there's the property benefits. There's then the rehab benefits or the contractor benefits. You then have the tenant benefits. You then have your typical benefits, which means um, what I refer to is when we get online, we can go on to like any uh, sell your house fast and all the typical benefits are there. We could find 85 websites. They all have the same benefits. Mm. Yeah, quick, you know, uh, all cash as is, quick close, no agents, no showings, all the typical bullshit. That's and amazing, that man. I, I, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Mike, but that's amazing. I never thought about that because you are, in, in essence, giving them the same benefits from, from, from that type of bit, from, from almost wholesaling strategy. That's crazy. You are. The only difference between what, what I do and what some other guys do is that I actually calculate the amounts. Mm. So instead of me saying, hey, I can save you the commission, I say, hey, I can save you $15,000 here. Right. Um, instead of saying, I can save you on the closing costs, I say, hey, I can save you 3500 here. Dude, so I've never heard that before. Ever. Ever. How crazy is that? So yeah. simple. So simple, right? Because it's all about money. And then ultimately we could defer the capital gains tax because they're doing it on an installment sale and understanding what the capital gains tax rate is for short and long term uh, for Fed in both state. So where somebody would just shoot it out of their gun and go, hey, I can do all, you know, save you the commissions, the closing costs, pop, 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 and they come around. It's like they're just firing it across the thing. It's like, wait a minute. I could save you $53,000. You could save me a bunch of money by not having to go to the bank. I'll overpay you for the house. I'll give you the monthly payments that you want. Just give me the time that I need. I said that's a lot of benefits for the seller and then plus tax deferment. I mean, there's a lot uh, that 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 they're getting. So, um, man, we're getting some work. Questions are raining in now, Mike. Uh, Edgar that's said what, when you when you're doing seller finance offers, are you offering down payment plus interest rate or what's the best way to present the offer? Oh, Mike's about to get hot now. Let's go. I can see those. Go get him, Mike. Get him. Take the get shirt him, off. Mike. <laughs> 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 How much oh, interest man. you give, Mike? My man's got <laughs> hands. About interest. <laughs> what interest? <laughs> um. So, let me have that uh, question one more time. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know why I keep going to mute. You want me to read that one more time? So, when doing seller finance offers. Are you offering down payment plus interest rate or what's the best way to present the offer? Oh, he's got the whiteboard. Let's go, baby. The white, we're going to the whiteboard now. <laughs> there you, go. you asked Edgar. There ain't no fool here. <laughs> All right. Here's what you can negotiate inside seller finance. Okay. You can negotiate the purchase price. You can negotiate the down payment, you can negotiate the actual payments, 
you can negotiate the call time or the balloon and you can negotiate the interest. Now notice that interest is number five on the list. I love that. And it's all about, like Ryan just said, oh, I never heard it that way. I never heard anybody like calculate the actual amounts and then come in the back and like smack the seller in the back of the head. I keep using smack the seller in the back of the head. I don't want you to take this the wrong way. I'm, I'm a very gentle soul. <laughs> no, you're bro. from New York, bro. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> you're, East Yonkers, Coast, Holmes. you're from Yonkers, baby. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Not far from Yonkers. That's what, that, that's so funny. Um, yeah. So what I mean by smack the seller in the back of the head, like Max and Ryan, there's something that runs through their blood when they're locking up deals, right? And there's something that runs through your blood here when you guys are locking up deals. You get this thing, you're like, oh yeah, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. I I I like to I like to I I I actually lost my train of thought. What was I trying to say here? Um the interest. We were talking about leaving it last when you're talking to sellers, then you the interest. Smack, yeah. <laughs> smack yeah. them in the head. Smack them yeah. in the back of the head. So leaving that stuff to the end where I come in with the money and like I make an impact on, on like what they, what is really, I understand. And what everybody here should understand at the end of this thing is that this is all about money. Mm -hmm. All about money, man. Amazing. That, that seller wants to know how much they're going to make. They want to know how much they're going to save. So if you're saving the money to the end on what you can save them, that's where it really has an impact when you're having the conversation. They're going, oh, my God, this guy is going to do things that nobody else has even offered. He's asked questions that nobody else even thought to ask. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Claudio said, I agree with that approach that you wrote there. It works big time. So Claudio does some creative financing as well, too. Uh, I know him personally. Beautiful, Claudio. I'm yeah. glad. Cool. Anything else said on that question? I think you laid it out right. Interest rate to the last. Um, but everything's negotiable, it sounds like. Everything's negotiable. When you understand what they need and you understand what they want, if they're, if they're, if they're more about having more cash up front, no problem. We'll give you some more cash up front. Yeah. Cool, cool. All right. So, Mike, just to kind of just to kind of rehash right there, Mike, just again for some of the listeners there, we don't want to give them all they want, right? And that's what you're explaining to them right now. If they want the dollar amount, we set the terms and we're not giving interest rate. If they want an interest rate, we're going to lower the dollar amount, right? Something's always got to be moving. That's a great point, Ryan. We're always moving the pieces around. And at the end of the day, there's a really high probability that we're going to come to a happy medium where everybody wins. Boom. I love that. Um, Jared has a question. He says, what are some common things sellers ask or say when you're trying to seller finance it and also give an example of a good deal? Um, very, it's a little, what do you think about that question, Mike? I mean, do you need a little more info on there or he's saying what are some what? Common things to, to, things seller ask say when you're trying to sell or finance it. I think what he's trying to say is what are some of the common questions to ask when purchasing on seller finance? Yeah, maybe like maybe some 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 the most common questions you get from sellers, like maybe objections I'm, I'm believing, right? Because what are some common things seller ask you when you're trying to sell or finance the deal? I guess that's what he's saying. Yeah. So it's again, it's all about the money. And I think the biggest objection is when am I going to get my money, right? So we just talked about having the mind shift from cash now, right, to like cash later or like kind of way down the road. So the, the biggest objection that I come across is when are you going to pay me off? Yep. Right. So ultimately, we can, we can stretch payments out over a certain period of time. And then we're going to pay them off. So the payments here, this is timeline number one. And this is timeline number two. 
And what you need to do is you need to structure these correctly in order to make sure that you're cash flowing every single month. Hmm. So the common, common questions that they ask are, how much money are you giving me? How much time do you want? When are you going to pay me off? And how much interest are you going to give me? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to take that. I'm going to reverse that and say, well, hey, I can't give you any interest because, because of A, B, C, and D. So in exchange for not giving you interest, I'll give you $25,000 more. In exchange for, I know that you want to be paid off in five years, Sally, but I don't make any money until year six. Meanwhile, I make money at year two, but I don't make any money at year, you know, until year six. So if you gave me 10 years, I'll give you $25,000 extra on the purchase price. You mean wow. I have to overpay for this? <laughs> why would why would we want to do something like that, Mike? That sounds crazy. Well, let's think about real estate. All right. So if I'm working on the yield between what I'm paying out and what I'm taking in, and I'm cash flowing by a thousand dollars a month, and I ask for an additional two years. How many months is that? 24. 24. That's an extra $24,000 in my pocket. Now, it would not be smart for me to offer the same amount that I was collecting, but I'm using that as an example now for people to just get the, oh, okay, I get it, right? So I want more time than that. But with each time, with, with, with each month, that passes and I'm, and I'm collecting X amount of money, that's $24,000 in my pocket. Yep. So the question is, would I give somebody $25,000 extra to put an additional 60 in my pocket? Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. Wow. Woo. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, Edgar said earlier, he said, thanks for the feedback and the roadmap. He said he appreciates that. Uh, Arnulfo says, seller finance is a collaborative approach, win-win situation. Um, Omero's asking where to, where to get the contracts. I think you answered that already, right? Um, you you had somebody draft them out for you. Sonny has a good, has a question here. She says, uh, who do you recommend for service provider? You mean to pay the seller? I think that's what, yeah, I think uh, the servicing company, that's what I'm. I, I do not. I cut checks. Mm. So you cut checks directly? I cut checks directly. Got I'm it. old school. And I guess this Brandon's question, actually, you answered that as well right now, right? Do you pay the seller monthly? So yep. uh, you definitely. Um... Uh, Claudio wants to know, Mike, do you do creative multifamily strategies also? Woo! Bro, that's when Mike was brother. here. Oh, man. <laughs> When Mike was here Thursday, Claudio, you should have seen the the, the three deals he underwrote on this multifamily. I was blown away. I'm like, wow. You want to you want to answer that, Mike? <laughs> yeah, man. That's where I live. I live I live in multifamily properties. Um, yeah. Are you kidding me? Like, so here's the thing, Claudio, is it's much easier to underwrite a ten unit than it is to underwrite a single unit. It's much easier to manage a 10 unit than it is to manage 10 single units. Mm. Um, yeah, I live in multifamily. And here's what's so great about multifamily. I'm going to let you in on a little tip here, okay? Is, and this is why it's so important to understand all of it, right? There, this is not a, Inside the space, there are so many strategies, right? And there are guys that just teach the strategy. I show you true real estate with the strategy so you can understand why you're doing what you're doing with the strategy. Mm 
It's not like, oh, let's go learn this strategy and see if we can lock up seller finance deals and not know what to do next, right? You need to understand the real estate, the strategy, then you need to understand the refinance components of it, right? You heard me say yesterday that it's about owning, renting, managing, and then refinancing the property with the, with the mindset that it's going to be long term, yep. right? You can't forget that when you go into these things. So, you know, Mike, Mike I'm going to stop you right there because I think that's a very important uh, point. I think that comes from, and, and I'm and I'm, picking from, I'm speaking from experience here. Is I think that comes from the mindset of transactional, right? Wholesale, um, where 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 I'm starting to do that mind shift, right? Talking to you and obviously being coached by you, is that um, that long term thinking, right? Negotiating for the long term, like like negotiating, like you're going to keep this property, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's a huge difference, and I, I just wanted to hit on that a little uh, a little more because that makes the difference when you're think when you're in the conversation with the seller when it comes to you know uh, uh, looking to create a win-win and collaborating on getting this uh, a deal done with them if that makes sense yeah it makes total sense great point yep I love it yep. uh, Aaron wants to know would you be foolish to take down a seller finance deal without a contractor already lined up for the renovations hell no you're looking for <laughs> you are looking for value add plays. Okay. And all value add is, is that you are going to, you are going to um, find properties that you can add value to. Now, whether you're brand new in the game, I don't know, Aaron. Oh, Aaron, what's going on, brother? Um, I don't know if you're brand new in the game, Aaron, or if you've been around a minute, but regardless on what property you take down, you are going to have to find a contractor, right? Like it's very, very rare that you're going to find a turnkey piece of property at a, at a, either a discount or even cash flowing that makes enough sense. Ultimately, I think even if you did find one and you didn't go through the process of hiring a contractor and walking through a rehab, you're going to learn jack shit by not doing anything like that. Right. So you want to make sure that you absolutely find value add plays because when you add value to it, you heard me talk a little bit about the refinance component. That's where you're going to make your money. When you add value to the property on a multifamily or even on a single family, that's where you make your money, right? So actually, there's two places where you make your money. You make your money when you buy and you make your money when you rehab. Mm. I love that. I love that. I think uh, if, if the deal, I like what you said there, the, if it's a great deal right especially a seller finance deal i think the last thing you want to worry about is let me get let me line up the contracts contractors first um because if it's value add and you're getting a good price zero interest zero zero down payment like why would you want to get the contract lined up uh but that's great uh robert thank you for the for the for the diamond uh sand valley cash fires thank you for the fire emojis brandon thank you for the fire emojis claudio thank you for the, the uh, uh, Mike putting on the gloves. Let's go, baby. Uh, Claudio says, uh, Mike with the ninja fighter. <laughs> Edgar, thank you guys. Um, oh, and Max, you can tell Gabe, no, I don't just do dispo. I saw his comment come through, Gabe. <laughs> I see you, Gabe. Yep, yep. Uh, Claudio said, the interest, the interest, etc., are fine details. You can split hairs later on down the line. That kind of what you've already uh, uh, explained, right? Um, See. There's some really cool stuff you can do with interest. We never even got into interest. We won't get into it here. That's that's going to be a little bit. That's probably another trip out to Arizona one on one, and then we'll come back out. I love it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's show what's possible there because that's that's amazing what you can do there. Perfect. Perfect. I can't wait to see that. Uh, David, thank you for the fire emojis. Uh, Mauricio said, "If I'm trying to get into a deal that needs money up front for repairs, and we use." I'm assuming uh, private money lenders for funds. If I keep the deal and not refinance, how would I be able to pay off the private money lender? Or were you prefer to, and he's got a follow-up comment, to keep them in the deal long-term? Okay, so with a, with a true seller finance deal, you could never use hard money, right? Because you couldn't get the terms that you need. You couldn't get enough time, right? Hard money, they want their money back quickly. It's expensive money mm-hmm. and everything else. Um, 
you could use private money for seller finance deals, but ultimately you have to understand, and it's a little bit difficult for me to answer the question because you would have to structure the deal where you could refinance it like quickly. So like within a 24 month period or a, or a three or a 36 month period, I don't believe that you'd be able to take, maybe this would help. I don't believe you would be able to take private money um, for less than 24 months. Got it. So it would have to be, it would have to be someone that um, that's willing to wait the long term to um, on the private money side. Right. Yeah. So like, let's just talk about it for a second. Let's just say at a hundred thousand dollar valuation, the mm-hmm. thing needed, the thing needed $50,000 worth of work. Right. Mm-hmm. And it was a $150,000 ARV and you took, you took the private money and and moved the value up. I mean, uh, like $180,000 ARV and you move the value up and you can raise the rents high. It, it, then it makes sense to go ahead and refinance it out so that even after you refinance it out, you're still cash flowing. You might not cash flow at the deal that I get locked up at 0% interest, but mm-hmm. you can... You, you can absolutely cash flow after the fact. So it's not like you actually have to structure deals that are that are cash flowing right out of the gate, right? Mm-hmm. Um, once you refinance the property, you're then going to take that stack of cash that everybody's so used to and your cash flow is going to shrink, mm. right? So instead of doing $1,000 a month, you're going to pull the $100,000 out of it and it's only going to cash flow $300 a month. And then what happens? You start the process over and over yep. time, the value of the property goes up all while the rents go up and yep. we get to depreciate the property. That makes sense. So that's the tax side of things, right? Right. Uh, Mike, on that on that note, though, is if you have somebody that you want to bring in as, let's say, a long term partner, right? to stay with it so they can be part of the cash flow appreciation. That's, that'll be a different, that's, that's probably a different, right? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I've got partners cool. on some properties. Hell yeah. 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 Um, Cause it, again, the whole idea of seller finance thinking long-term because of cash flow and all that, if you're, if you, if you're going to use the private money uh, lender, they're going to want their money back. Right. Especially if it's short term. And, and so that might be maybe depending on how much you cash flow from what you're saying, that could be an issue uh, in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So a way around that is to give them some equity ownership in it when you either yeah. sell it or refinance it or sell it on a wrap or whatever it may be. So right. it's not. So just be very, very clear here. You can wholesale these deals. Mm-hmm. You can do whatever you want with these deals. You can wholesale yep. them. You could wrap them. Right. You could you could get out of the management side of it and and sell it on a wrap mm. and create your own notes and don't have anything to do with the property. You're not going to you're not going to. Um, you're not going to get the advantage of all of the benefits that I said before, right? The cash flow, the leverage, the tax advantages, and the appreciation. But you can absolutely collect just as much money acting as the bank. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And then the 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 moving the notes around what you showed me here at the house, brother. That's that's another <laughs> high level shit. We'd be, we'd be here all night. Uh, <laughs> Guys, if you're getting if you're getting value out of this, drop some fire emojis, take a screenshot, tag us, Cash Money Mike underscore Real Ryan over Cash, Real Max Jimenez. Take a screenshot and put it in your stories on IG. Listen, we want to help as many as people possible. Mike is a go giver. Mike lo- has passion for this, just like we do have passion for our niche. And you know, now getting into this, uh, drop some fire emojis in the comment section. Like I said, take a screenshot. We really appreciate if you can do that. As we continue to answer some questions, you guys are awesome dropping in some great, great questions for Mike. Uh, but we want to continue this as long as Mike is not falling asleep or whether he's on East Coast time. Like, <laughs> he's like go. Monday morning coffee. Let's go. Mike, Let's here's go. an interesting question from David. Has a seller ever wanted to end a contract? The seller can't end a contract. They're the bank. Yep. <laughs> Just like your bank, right? On your mortgage, like my mortgage that I have here. Yeah, like the seller, right? Bank of America can't come in here and say, that's it. It's over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only way that happens is if I don't pay them. If you don't pay them, right, right. They can't come in yeah. here and go, you know what? I'm taking that loan back. 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, that sounds more like a, like a, what is it? A, a lease purchase or lease option or something, but even then you're locked in, right? Like, yeah, you're locked in here. Got it. Uh, Donna says buy and hold equals money forever. Elbow cough. <laughs> That's a dab. That's there you go. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Look at Mike. I What's love up? it. Mike, Mike cut on it quick. All right, Jordan has a good uh, question here. Can I wrap a property and sell it to a family without doing repairs? That's a loaded question. So can you wrap what kind of property? Yeah. What kind of deal, right? I mean, I wouldn't wrap I wouldn't wrap a sub two deal. Somebody else had something in here about a sub two deal. Yeah, that's the next question right now. So Jordan is this. Oh, he's the same one. Is it possible to wrap a sub two deal with the seller's equity as seller financing? There's a lot of liability in that, right? Because you're ultimately responsible to make the payments on the first mortgage. So if you're going to sell it on a wrap and make the other people responsible of it and they don't pay you, you're going to be in trouble. So with a sub two, you want to sell sub twos on lease options. Hmm. That's interesting. You know what? And there's. Oh, that's fire. Go ahead, Ryan. Oh, that was just awesome. That was big right there. I don't know if everyone heard that. You want to sell. Say it again, Mike. You want to sell sub two on what? You want to sell a sub two on a uh, on a lease option that'll protect you the most. I've never heard the guru say that, Mike, that that are subject to experts, quote unquote. That is yeah, interesting. I mean, think about it. So a wrap mortgage is nothing more than a mortgage that wraps an additional mm -hmm. mortgage. If you're taking it right. over subject to and making the payments on their behalf. There's an underlying loan in place. Then another mortgage comes on top of that. And if that more and if that guy defaults on the mortgage, who's going to make the payment on the on the original sub two? Wow, that sounds like a legal legal situation there, brother. <laughs> That's why I can't. I'm not crazy about sub twos, man. <laughs> you know, Ooh. here's what's crazy about this too, like about the space. There's a lot of people out there talking the lingo, right? Mm. Like the raps and the memorandums oh, and the this and the that, and it's like dog it's real estate like <laughs> let's go find some good property let's go structure a deal in the right way and not have to worry about whether or not we're putting taking beneficial interest in a trust that we're going to have to go through probate on and then wrap it's just like it's the craziest shit for right like to me i'm a i'm a little bit old school man but like yeah you don't need to you're not going to wrap us up too deal uh, like we said, like we said, and um, we were having dinner right on that, that Thursday night is that yeah. when you start to needing to have lawyers on, on call on 24 seven, it, maybe it's something you don't want to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you're playing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're playing yeah. with the big boys, right? So exactly. Alberto, I appreciate the fire emojis, man. Uh, I love it. Gets Mike pumped up. Juan, thank you for the fire emojis as well. Cesar, love the money bags. Sonia like already money bags. Baby. Yeah. Money bag right there. Bam. Caesar. Sonia, I appreciate she already she already tagged us on IG, guys. I'm telling you right Sonia. now. Hi, yeah, Sonia. Hi, yeah Sonia. she already tagged us. Juan, appreciate it. Mauricio said fire, fire, fire. Robert, thank you for the fire emojis. Annie, thank you for the fire emojis. Uh, Othonia as well. Thank you for the and Steven. Uh oh, here's here's I like this one right here. If a seller doesn't mention a balloon at all, that's it. You don't have to ask anything else. <laughs> I knew it. Don't ask another thing. No clowns. No clowns. <laughs> we're good no balloon we're good we're gonna make a ton of money that's it joseph if he doesn't mention balloon you're the last the second part of your question throw it out the window right <laughs> right out the window <laughs> it's easy peasy wheezy we if they don't say balloon they don't mention anything you got it locked up for 30 years brother uh joe, JD, huh no think of this joe if if there's no payoff period and you're cash flowing at X amount a month, that shit goes on forever. <laughs> yeah, That's you don't amazing. even need the second part of the question. I like that. JD, thank you for the fire emojis. Joseph, thank you. Uh, notes, sell sub twos on lease option. You got some good students in here, brother. They're paying, cool. they're paying attention. So uh, Sonny says, working on one of those right now, lease option with sub two I'm doing right now. So Yeah, make sure you get some good... Uh, Make sure you get some good option money up front there, Sonia. Yep. Perfect. Liam, killing it. Killing it, you guys. Thank you, Liam. I appreciate it. Let's see. Jordan has another question. So how would you structure a deal that has some equity? For example, sellers wants to sell a house for $300,000, and they have an underlying mortgage of 150000 
Yeah, so this is going to be a uh, hybrid deal. But again, Jordan, we need to understand these questions are great questions. But in order for me to structure anything, I need to know what the seller wants and what the seller needs. I can't just come up with any kind of like scenario here, right? So how would you structure a deal that has some equity? When you when you ask that question, what it's saying is it's a hybrid deal because there is an underlying, right? The seller wants to sell a house for 300 and they have an underlying mortgage for 150. So I would pay 300. I'd pay 325. I'd pay 350. Mm. I can give that seller $50,000 more than what they want. I could take over that mortgage subject too. And then I'll need to get what I need to get on the remaining equity part. Mm. But we need to know what they need and what they want. Yep. Yep. Yeah. The structuring part, um, it, it's difficult to do because that 150,000, uh, you know, between the, the underlying loan, underlying, underlying loan and the difference of whatever that 300,000 is like, how are you going to structure it if you don't know what they want? Right. I think that's what Mike, what you're, what you're basically saying they want three hundred thousand dollar in a purchase price we've got a hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan what do we need what do we need to know about this loan mm -hmm. we need to know the interest rate the rate we need to know the right we need to know the rate we need to know how far into the loan they are right so we need to know the rate we need to know the payment now let's just say they want let's just say that this payment here is a thousand dollars a month, right? We can't change that. Max said it earlier, right? There's an uh, Mike. He 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 gave a follow up to to the question. Understood. I was able to structure the deal with zero interest, thirty k down, and a ten year balloon. Yeah, what are you worried about on this? Yeah, then that one. Yeah, he's he's gonna make a ton of money. What's it gonna rent for? Yep. So. Yeah. Perfect. Man, good job. That's actually a really good nice deal. job, Jordan. Yeah. Yeah, great job. I'll buy that yeah. from you. <laughs> wholesale it <laughs> yeah man you want to wholesale that thing I'll give you <laughs> all right so i think this goes with the same thing right talking to someone with only 10 k in his mortgage so it's not free and clear but seems willing to do a seller finance deal over 10 years how would you handle the 10k uh, i think you just explained that as well right i think that goes with what we we're just talking about with such a small amount aaron you pay that ten thousand, right make it a true seller finance deal yeah that's such a small amount of money yeah, no, for sure. Uh, Joseph, thank I'll you for the, the money if you don't have it. Say that again, Mike. I said I'll lend him the money if he doesn't have it <laughs> on that deal. Yeah, I mean, hell, it, hell yeah, ten grand. I'll lend you ten grand, brother. Yep, yep. Hit him up, Aaron. He ain't kidding, man. Hit no, him I'll, up, bro. I'll lend you ten grand. We gotta, you know, we'll have to talk about some terms, but I'll give it to you. Yeah, I mean, cash money, Mike <laughs> underscore. Hit him up, Aaron. Um, He's got that in his pocket. I guarantee it. That's why they call him Cash Money Mike. Let me tell you the story about why they call him Cash Money Mike. This guy, he went into McDonald's to buy his daughter a, a 59 cent ice cream, and he pulled out a rack of 10K and put it on the on the counter and said, take the bill. And then, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's similar to that, bro. It's similar to that. You know I'm never going to stop saying that, right, Mike? That, that's what happened. A big rack of cash. <laughs> oh my god uh marisa said if they don't mention a balloon there's no payoff period you can de technically do a hundred year term i mean man <laughs> yeah i mean ultimately if if they're not really worried about the call if they're not worried about a call at all and all they're worried about is that monthly payment i mean at some point you'll probably want to structure something on a 30 40 or 50 year note it all depends on their age too right you don't want to be you don't want to be getting a uh I mean, it's up to them to kind of structure their, you know, estate stuff after they get out of, you know, out of here. But yeah, yeah, no balloon, no balloon, and all the time in the world, you're going to make a bunch of money. David said, "You seller finance the ice cream." <laughs> I'll, I'll finance you anything, brother. What you need? Oh man, uh, Jordan's got a follow up to the. Uh, so essentially, I was okay. This is the family one. We'll have. Uh, so essentially, I was thinking to wrap the deal to a family. Uh, we'll have to break down with. Uh, the number with you and see what you be the best exit strategy on that yeah. deal. Hit them up, Jordan. Hit them up, man. Hit them up. Uh, Sonia said, I'm curious uh, what Mike, what terms are, what, ter what Mike terms are and how much time would he give? <laughs> Sonia, your terms are going to be much better than anybody else's. I got you. 
<laughs> uh, perfect. Aaron says, uh, that was my original thought. Do you state uh, that 10K payment in docs? And where would it state that? I mean, so my... it's just on the contract, Aaron, right? On the contract, it's going to have the purchase price. It's going to have your down payment. It's going to have your earnest money, uh, the due diligence money, if there is any, right? And then cash, close of escrow, or if, if there's no cash, um, if it's not, you know, a non-cash deal and it's a, it's a term deal, it'll just be in the contract. Very I love simple. It. I love it. Um, thank you for the fire emojis, man. This is awesome. Um, so we're at about an hour and 15 minutes, Mike, how are we doing on time, brother? Man, we're doing great. We're doing All fantastic. Right. Perfect. You want to talk about, you want to give a deal example, uh, a deal example, the, the one you, uh, you did, uh, is that, is that, is that a long one? The one where you, where you seller finance that deal, you, that 90,000 and then yeah. you structure it. You want to give that example, brother, so people can see like an example of a structure of a deal. Um, and I know that you like using that one because I think that is a great example on a deal. Sure. Um, what I'll do is I won't waste too much time telling you how I sourced the deal and all that other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Let me go through You're the good. numbers so that you can understand the numbers and where they go to and everything else. All right. Yep. I love it. Let's do it. Don't worry um, about time either. And uh, Mike, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, man. I can go. Uh, cool. so well, let me tell you a little bit about the deal. So long story short, I, I wound up finding a guy who wanted to invest in real estate. He had a hundred thousand dollars in cash. He was a young guy. Um, and he had never been in real estate before. My wife sold him a house for 40 grand. I set the rehab budget for him at $40,000. Uh, he should have had $20,000 left over. And long story short is he couldn't get it finished. He couldn't get it done. He asked me for $10,000. And I knew that if I had given him the $10,000 that he was absolutely going to have a hard time paying me back. And if you have a hard time paying me back, I'm going to come and foreclose on the loan. So anytime I loan money out, um, if you don't pay me back and you don't have all your shit straight, I'm going to come get my money, right? Um, I like to do things legally, right? So he asked me for 10 grand. I wound up going up to this house and he was like 95% done. It was all brand new stuff in there, brand new floors, brand new kitchens, brand new bathrooms. And I can immediately sense that by him asking me for the 10 grand, that he still needed that money to kind of bring it to retail, which was, you know, his, his intention. And I knew he wouldn't be able to get done. And I can kind of sense that maybe he had put in some of the materials that were laying around inside the living room on a credit card because there were like a bunch of um, stainless steel appliances and all the stuff. So I just came out and asked him, right? I said, listen, are you behind on your credit card payments? And he said, yes. Now I'm starting to get into the fact finding of all of it is right. Like all of the motivation, right? So now I know he's behind on his mortgage, on his, on his credit card payments. I asked him how much he said he was behind like four grand. I asked him where he was living. He said he just took an apartment. I then asked him how much he was paying on the apartment every single month, you know, and, and I was just gathering information. Um, all the while, my wife is a broker. She comped the house for me. And what it was, was there was a comp on this house at $180,000. Okay. A, let, me, let me fix that. Yeah. You... Well, let me go one more. Give me one second to take one second to get that thing back. There All we right. go. We're back. All right. Yeah, we're, we're back. Good. All right. Yep. So $180,000 ARV. Okay. And he... I, I just flat out asked him, I said, hey, listen, I said, what do you think your time is worth here for the property? And he said, well, I'd like to make like 20 grand. And I said, okay, or like, I don't know, 25,000. And I said, okay. I said, uh, let me think about it. I'm going to go ahead and order an inspection. I was willing to pay for the inspection up front because I knew I was going to buy the house. So I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't mind getting the inspection. And I remember saying to the inspector, I go, dude, do not come back to me with less than 100 pages. I want you to rip this house apart. And the guy did the inspection and he came back. He brought me 103 pages. And 
I went, I met Jason back up there and I started going through it. And I said, Jason, you told me this was done. And you told me this was done and it's not done. You told me this was done. And as I'm going through it, I can, he can sense, and I know what I'm doing. I'm trying to get the price down. Right. So long story short, I wind up agreeing to buy the house for $105,000. Okay. <laughs> 105 grand. And I knew that he was $4,000 behind on his credit card payments. So I wanted to offer him more money, just like in the last, whoever was on the live, um, right before we got onto this YouTube, you heard me say, I knew that the guy needed five grand. How much money was I going to offer him to make him feel like, oh, okay, you know what? I'm getting enough here. So with this guy, Jason, he needed four grand. I offered him 10 grand. And he said to me, well, Mike, I don't, I need more cash down. And I said, well, how much more cash do you want? And he said, I'd really like to get 20. And I said, here's what I'll do, Jason. I'll give you $10,000 now. So this will be a down payment. I'll then give you another $5,000 in 18 months. So what that ultimately is, when I say that like that, what it is is, that $5,000 in 18 months is, is, is just a note, right? There's no interest on it. There's no payments on it. It says, I owe max, I owe max $5,000 in 18 months. It's just a promissory note, okay? So let's take this all together, right? 105 minus the 10 is 95 minus the 5,000 in 18 months. This is just a separate note. So we'll just leave that on the side. I told him that he would need to finance. I'm just saying it to you like this. I didn't explain it to him like this. I said, I need you to hold paper. You go ahead and hold the $90,000 and I'll get you paid off in like, I don't know, maybe like 12 years. And he said, well, I can't wait 12 years to get paid off. And I said, okay, well, here's, here's what I need to do. I need to make sure that I keep my payments super, super low. So if I was to go to a bank right now, Jason, with my credit, I could walk in there and get a very, very low interest rate, right? And I would be able to make very, very small payments. So instead of me going to the bank and spending the fee with the bank, we'll keep this transaction in-house, but I want to keep my payments low. So I'm willing to pay you the same amount of money that I would pay the bank, which is about 250 bucks a month. I'll make equal payments to you for 250 bucks a month and I'll get you paid off in 10 years. And he said, I can't wait 10 years. And I said, well, Jason, I don't make any money until year five. So I'm definitely going to need more time. How would you feel about me paying you off at eight years? And he said, okay. So ultimately what I've just done is I've structured my note. With the words that just came out of my mouth, that's exactly what's going to go inside the promissory note. I'm going to take $90,000. I'm going to amortize it over 30 years, meaning I'm going to spread it out over 30 years. Now, you heard me say earlier, like how um, when you're doing this, you're thinking about money in, money out, and you're thinking in terms of years and months, right? So, Instead of saying, I'll pay you off in 30 years, or I'll pay you off in 15 years, I'm going to make you 180 payments. I'm going to make you 360 payments. I'm going to make you 96 payments. I'm going to make you 50 payments, right? Because when you start talking about years, people go, shit, I'm getting old. Like, I don't want to <laughs> wait years. I don't want to wait years, but if yeah. I say, Hey, I'm going to make you payments, I'm going to make you 120 payments and then I'll pay the property off. Or I'll make you 60 payments and then I'll pay the property off. Right? So the words that come out of your mouth are super, super important when you're negotiating. Okay. Yeah. So what I did is I took this 90,000 and I divided it by 360 months, which came out to a payment of $250 a month, which is about half my cell phone bill. Okay. So I've got a $250 a month payment to him. You heard me say earlier about expenses and stuff like that. We'll have to calculate all the expenses. 
inside the expenses, we have the taxes, the insurance, we have all the maintenance, anything else that we have to pay. We've got to pay, I don't know, a Terminex bill. I don't know, anything, anything that we have to pay on the property. And I wound up paying an extra $200 a month for all the bullshit. So it was 450 total money out. And I bring in 1450 a month in rent. So now I got a thousand dollars positive. Okay. Now watch where the numbers go. This is important. Remember, I got ninety thousand dollars spread out over three hundred and sixty months. Gave me a two hundred and fifty dollar a month payment. I've got two hundred dollars in expenses. I've got four hundred and fifty dollars in money out. I collect fourteen fifty in rent, and I cash flow a thousand dollars a month. Now remember, I've got to pay this off in eight years, right? So I'm going to make the numbers easy for you. I'm not going to take this stuff out here. I'm just going to make it easy so that you can see what's possible. Okay. And then if any of you have a deal that you want me to underwrite, I'll underwrite them for you. If you put the deal together. Um, yes, I'll, he will. Yeah, yeah, he will. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just do it for you. You don't have to worry about a thing. All right. Love it. So now, remember, I bought a hundred and eighty thousand dollar home for a hundred and fifty for a hundred and five thousand. He financed ninety thousand. I've got four hundred and fifty dollars out. I've got fourteen fifty in. I've got a thousand dollars a month in cash flow. Now, if I've got eight years, eight times twelve. Let's do this. Twelve times eight is ninety six months. 1,000 times 96 is $96,000. I then am paying him $250 a month. Remember, this 450 was 250 was going to principal and 200 was going to expenses. I now have $250 a month times 96 months, which is roughly $21,000. That's going straight to pay down. Mm -hmm. Technically, if all I did was take this 96000 that I collected and put it into a shoebox, I will have $107,000 inside. I will have paid down twenty one, put $96,000 into, into the box. I only owe ninety, so this thing gets paid off in year six and a half. And that's Jeez. the end of it. Boom. Man, now, that's amazing. Let's refresh. Or, or the can in the backyard. <laughs> the can in the backyard, man. Don't, yo, don't come to my place with a metal detector. <laughs> now, watch. That's just the acquisition. All right. Now let's go refinance this thing. Let's go. Are you ready? Now, what happens? Let me ask you a question. What's going to happen to the rent? Over the course of eight years. Go up. It's going up, Mike. Man. So this, this number goes up over time. This doesn't change, right? This pay down, this $250 a month. This doesn't change. This goes up. This number goes up. They all rise in value, right? So now what we do is the house is already paid off. Mm -hmm. It's already paid off. But we don't have to. We don't have to take that money and pay it off. We'd be stupid to pay it off. We'd be stupid to go grab that money out of the can. <laughs> that money's already in another property. We now go back to the bank seven years later, right before the eight years are up, and we say, "Hey, bank, remember it was worth one eighty when I bought it." We now say to the bank, hey, bank, what's it worth now? And the bank says, seven years later, it's worth 250 And they're going to give me an 80% loan. What's uh, 250 at 80%? 250000 at 80%? 250 times 80%. They're going to now give me a loan for $200,000. I can go ahead. I can pay off the ninety. dollars I, I, not the 90. Remember, we got 21,000 off the 90. So call it 20,000 off the 90. I'm going to pay off the 70. 
I'm going to put $130,000 in my pocket plus that money that I, that I, that I got in my coffee can. That's already in another piece of property. And on we go. Jeez. This deal is so crazy that even the eraser got excited. <laughs> we, need, we need some of those horn sounds, man. <laughs> man, I love it, dude. That's amazing. This is exactly what the banks do. Yep. So yep. just seeing it from a different, just seeing it. And all we have to do is overpay people. Really? In exchange for time? You mean to tell me all, all of us crazy closers out there can't overpay for property and get some damn time? <laughs> Come on. It's like taking wow. candy from a baby. I love it. Uh, Jared has a question, Mike. Uh, he says, what happens if they pass away or they die? I don't know what happens. I don't know either, man. You tell Where me. Where are they going, man? They got their plot picked out. <laughs> where are they going to the ground they're going to the mausoleum they're going to burn them up what are they gonna... i'm getting burned up i know that <laughs> they're going to burn me up uh, amazing yeah i mean you continue making the payment right yeah yeah wherever it goes you can wherever, it, go, wherever it goes it goes now yeah. now you shouldn't not make the payment right? yeah exactly if they die don't don't stop making the payment yeah exactly exactly uh, Joseph says, boom, ever it says facts. Uh, Juan says, for tax defer, is the seller just paying taxes on the total they received from us on a yearly basis? Only paying 12, 1,000 only payments opposed to a lump sum. Yeah, great question, Juan. So uh, long-term capital gains tax, short-term capital gains tax. So let's just say long-term 20% to the Fed, five to the state. They're only going to pay the capital gains tax rate on the yearly income that they receive. Mm. I love it. I love it. Uh, Robert, thank You're you. You're responsible for it. You're just spreading it out. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Robert, for the – Jermaine Green says, this is great. Um, Jesus says, you solved this problem and structured the deal to work both for both parties. It's all about solving problems. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Aaron brought it back to – is again, he's saying, is that in, th in that example – it was renovations that got the guy in trouble. Not necessarily. Uh, so going back to my question earlier, how important is it that you get some kind of contractor group identified? <laughs> think of the lead generation. Think, think, try to think outside of the box here. Yeah. Think of how many first-time flippers there are in this country that can't get done. Yo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yo. Yo, Cash got some lead generating sources that will make your head spin. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I love it. We're gonna have to talk about those, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I got a backstage, you know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, come see me in the green room. <laughs> yeah, come see me in the green room. Uh, let's see. Jordan just popped in a question. How would you get around the seller saying, "I don't want the property back if you default"? What would be the best response or a way to structure that uh, in case that they they do come up with that? You know, Jordan, this is not so sub two has got some kind of pain and seller finance has some kind of gain. I mean, you're really not going to structure these things if you default, but or or like to default. And you got to make the seller aware of that. Right. I I get that question all the time and I flat out tell him, I go, I would not be going through all this process to go ahead and not make you the payment. Uh, you know, obviously, this mm -hmm. is not this is not like wholesale where you're putting a bunch into a funnel. Right. And like having it drip out and just having these generic conversations. So it's a lot easier to get around this um, than anything else. And ultimately, um, that's really how you get around it. Now, if they're worried about you not making the payment, mm -hmm. then you could you could put a performance deed or hold a deed inside escrow for them and tell them that, hey, listen, if I do default, you can go ahead and take, you know, this deed and run down and record it. Yeah. Um, but you, you really, if you can't get around that one, it's just really telling them, Hey, listen, you know, I, I would have no incentive to do this. I yeah. mean, ultimately this is not, when you go into these deals and you go into these conversations, you better be acting as if. Yep. That's a hundred percent. Go ahead, Ren. No, I'll just say that was key right there. Like you can't go in there like all shy and uh, well, maybe this, you got to know what you're doing, go in there hard and you're taking care of them. You're solving an issue. You're giving them everything they want in the story. Yeah. Great point. Ryan. I love that. I like that. You said, act as if I hate fake it till you make it. I like acting as if that's, that's my go-to. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, it looks like some uh, David wants to collaborate with you, Mike, what markets 
are you currently buying right now? I only buy in Charlotte, man, and around Charlotte. I'm about to buy in Greensboro, uh, which is about uh, maybe about two hours away. Um, I'll stay around this area. I'll stay around this area. I'll buy. Listen, if if any of you structured zero percent seller finance deals, you come see me. Hmm. I'll buy them all, all day, all day, baby. That's awesome. I'll, I'll, what, buy what, what? With, I'll buy them with Max and Ryan. We'll split them. Oh, let's go. I love it. I love it. I love it, man. I pre that, that was a great example. I love that, that deal structure. I think it's a really, a really good one, but man, what an amazing breakdown, man. What, what, um, I, there was a question I wanted to ask and I lost my train of thought that goes in what, what you, what you did right now with that. Um, as far as the, um, you know, some of the things that you're doing besides your lives and all that, uh, oh, there you go, bro. I have a 37 unit apartment building in Greensboro. If you're interested, Jordan, I wonder if you're on my emails. I wonder if you're the guy on my emails. Are you a broker? Yeah, let us know. Put in the comment section if you are on the email uh, drip uh, for uh, Mike. Recognize okay. Mike is at 11:35 p.m. Sonia said. <laughs> Come on, we're getting started. Woo! Let's go. Yeah, my, uh, Jordan, if, if you're able to answer that question that Mike just put it, um, basically, if you can, uh, that way he can see uh, going on. Uh, Alberto said, how do you determine how much you can overpay the cash flow? <laughs> By the amount of time that they're willing to give me. The money's in the time, baby. The money is in the time. So just think about this, Alberto. It's all going to depend upon the actual size of the deal. So let's just say it's a $200,000 deal. And I agree to pay $25,000 more than what they want and where they sit is at retail. You think that might move them a little bit? I think that might move them a little bit. If I paid oh, yeah. $45,000, that's definitely going to move them. But with each move that I go up in price, I want to go out in time. Hey, hey, Mike, I, I, I can't remember if you hit on this. We've covered so much today, but I like what you say is you're willing to overpay because there's three factors that are going to make that up. And I think you said it. One is cash flow, appreciation, and then the other one was de depreciate the property or depreciation, yeah. if I remember correctly. So the thing that's going to make that up is mm -hmm. going to be the market. Market, yeah. Uh, right. okay. Can you break that down? Yeah, so let's just say – Let's just say somebody wants 200,000, mm -hmm. right? And I can't get them to move. Right. They want 200,000. And they're only willing to give me five years. They're hell bent. They're like, I'm not moving on five years. I immediately go to purchase price. And why do I go to purchase price? It's because it's no money out of my pocket. Mm hmm. So I'll go, all right, listen, if I gave you $25,000 extra, would you give me 10 years? Mm. And he goes, I'm not waiting 10 years. And I go, all right, fine. If I gave you $250,000, would you meet me halfway and give me eight? And he says, yes. I've got to make up $50,000 worth of value over the course of eight years. I can see where this is going. Ooh. So what's the appreciation rate in this country? It was 17, 18% not, not long ago. <laughs> Too long ago. I got to say it's at least anywhere between eight to 10 a year. I mean, so, so, so who takes care of this? The market takes care of this. Wow. I don't, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm all about cash flow. Cash flow, baby, with a K. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you surprise me every time, Mike. Holy smokes. We're this just is getting you. started. We didn't I even, know, we, bro. We didn't even get started yet, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I love it. Uh, Jordan said uh, he's not on your mail list, but he is direct to seller, and he thinks that people are shopping that deal around, I guess, if you've seen it. No, you're not a broker. You're direct to seller, and I'm sure there are many people shopping the deal. Well, yeah, I would I would assume so. So give me, send me the, uh, send me the, um, send me the details of the deal. Yeah, Mike, what's the best way? Uh, can you let people know right now? I'm pretty sure there's people chomping up the bits right now to figure out how they can 
get a hold of you, work with you? Um, what is the best way that people can reach out the best and easiest way right now? Yeah. So just shoot me a message on Instagram. If we're not connected on Instagram for all of you who are on here, if you got value out of this today, truthfully, the one thing that helps guys like us to help spread the word is yep. literally don't not do it. Okay. Yep. Take a picture of your computer screen, take a picture of us, I go ahead it. and make sure you tag us, put yep. it out there. It'll, it'll help. It'll help get us connected. Um, I've got a CRM that is message based so that I don't lose anything from you guys. Uh, but Instagram is going to be the easiest way. And if you want to send me an email, you can yep. send it to uh, Cardinal, yep. like, like the bird, Cardinal, R-E, and then consulting at gmail.com. Cardinal Real Estate Consulting at gmail.com. Yep. I'm going to make it in a little bit more enticing here for you guys to make, tag us. Th for those of you that takes take the for those of you that takes a screenshot tags us on instagram i'm gonna give i'm gonna give you the presentation that i gave on sunday mike what did, what did you think about that presentation the the think about it eliminator brother i'm gonna give that presentation away that thing was amazing that thing was amazing man i i i'm learning i'm learning from you guys as much as you're learning from me trust me yeah yeah so it helps us out a lot guys it's not that we None of us here, what I can tell you, none of us three that are here are, are, are ego driven, right? Like we need to be tagged. We're looking to help more people. We're looking to not only um, do something in the industry, we're looking to make a dent. And we talked offline a couple, uh, you know, about some things that we want to do. And it's going to get crazy. It's uh, for the for the good of, of it. Right. Um, connecting oh, yeah. with Mike has been one of the best things ever. Uh, Ryan's getting ready to do some great things too as well. So make sure that you follow Ryan. Make sure that you stay in tune with Ryan. He's getting he's about to get ready to show out and drop some massive, massive value. So uh, we need to get we need we just need to get the word out, get more help more people. That's what it's all about. I mean, that's really what it's all about. So um, and then you is your uh, Mike. I know that you're very humble, even though he 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 seems he gets passionate and gets really he brings out the gloves when he starts talking about seller finance. But when I talk about him talking about he has a, he does have a master class, he has a, a course. I, I want to push him to talk more about that because I think he is going to help people. Is your November one full? Can anybody else get in that one for November, brother? Yes. Yeah, so uh, November, I think I've got five spots left for November. October's full. So I'm 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 smack in the middle of my September training. Yeah. Um, October's already sold out and November I've got like five spots left. I, um, well, let me let you n n know what's going on this weekend. I'm going to do, I'm going to do, some, I'm going to do something that I haven't, that I've been wanting to do for a very, very, very long time. And then we'll talk about a little bit about the training. So I want to work with people who want to fucking work. I don't, I don't really want to hold hands. I want action takers, somebody who's going to do the work. Um, I'm, I can, I can motivate you to a certain point, but ultimately if you don't understand the strategy and again, you want to fast track your way to success, this is a pay to play industry, right? We've got years and years and years of experience that we're willing to fucking just throw out there, um, you know, for all of you, right. To kind of fast track it. So yep, yep. what I'm going to do is tomorrow at 8 a.m., I'm going to let that link out of the bag. Nice. That link, I usually go live every Sunday at noon, and I, I drop serious shit. This Sunday, I'm going to go live on a Zoom. I'm only letting 100 people in there. That's it, 100 people, and it's cut off. Let's so go. tomorrow at 8 a.m., I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop that link uh, you guys can get in there. I'm going to go three hours, which means probably five hours. I might, <laughs> like I might Friday, go. Friday was supposed to be one hour, but we went three hours. <laughs> yeah. And you wouldn't I even want to quit, man. He was, we still wanted to go. We had, we had to tell him like, all right, all right, Mike, mercy, mercy, mercy. <laughs> I might go, uh, I might go, uh, I might go yes. a long time. So if you want some free game, I'm going to be breaking it down. I'm going to have some special guests in there. You'll see Max in there. You'll see Ryan in there. Yeah. So Listen, make sure that you guys I, get over there. I want to say something right there, Mike. Listen, when he says he's going to drop free game, he is not talking about fluff. 
rah rah. He's talking about meat and potatoes. Believe me, I've been in that Zoom call. Uh, you guys think you saw things tonight? Uh, tonight we went a little different. We want to get the story. We want to get the the approach, the thought, the mindset, the mind shift, and then give a little bit of uh, you know um, uh, examples of that. But you need to listen when he says he's going to drop some game. We're talking real game, not all meat and potatoes. Am I wrong on that, Ryan? No, dude. He he brings it. He brings actionable items that you can take right now, go implement, and make money today. That's what he does all day long. Yeah. And you say you're dropping the link at uh, 8 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, correct? Yeah, I'm going to drop it at 8 o'clock. Uh, Sonia, you're going to get it tonight. Anybody who's in my training, anybody who is in my training right now or is signed up for my training, you're all going to get that tonight. Ryan and Max, you'll all get that tonight. Appreciate and then it. 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, it goes live. First hundred, first, however, remaining people are there on Sunday at noon. We're doing it on Sunday so you can relax. I, if you're on the West Coast, grab your coffee. You're on the East Coast, grab your lunch, and let's go to work. We're gonna, I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna be bringing the shit here. I'm gonna have these two guys in here. Some other guests are coming in, and we're gonna make a day of it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And then, uh, if you want training, if, if, if you are serious about wanting to understand this, um, whether you take it from me or you learn it from somebody else, you should really just learn creative finance because it'll change the way you look at real estate. I'll change the way you look at real estate. I'll change the way you buy real estate. Um, and ultimately can change your whole life, like literally with the stroke of a pen. So if you're finding it a little bit difficult with other your strategies that you're kind of deploying and you, and you, and you want to get into something that's going to help you in the long run, there has never, ever, ever been an opportunity like there is right now. There is an incredible, incredible, op there's a reason why these closers are pivoting. There's a reason why Max and Ryan and all the other guys that I hang around with are have a quick pivot because they're smart. They know what's in front of them. They see what's coming down the line. There's a reason why I'm in the Zoom right now. So if you are interested in it, now is the time. Shoot me a DM. Uh, I'll send you a link. Um, and, uh, yeah, once you get me, you get me forever, too. I don't let you go. So. Yeah. I love that, Mike. I, I you know, it's uh, I, w I always want you to feel comfortable, brother, when you're on my IG or you're in my our Zooms or even here. Right. Because I know, again, we connect it. We I, I know the value you bring. And man, genuinely, you're 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 the real deal, bro. So uh, there is a question here. Leo wants to know where will the link be dropped so he can uh, be ready for that. Uh, what do you want the link for? Oh, the uh, link for the uh, thing. For the Zoom. Yeah. 8 a.m. tomorrow at 8 a.m. It's going to go live and I promise you it'll be full in 15 minutes. So make yeah. sure you get on it. That's an IG though, Mike, you're dropping That'll it on, on IG. IG. Yeah. Right on so my Leo, stories. Leo, make sure you follow cash money, Mike underscore at on Instagram um, because it, he's, he's not kidding like that thing. I think we had 116 registered the last on um, for Friday, uh, Mike, and we could only fit hundred people, but that's what, uh, you know, the, that's what uh, zoom does uh let's see uh cash money mike is the real deal the brother changed my life that's antonio uh your Thank guy you, antonio bro. so um and then uh edward said we appreciate it fellas uh 8 a.m az time no 8 a.m eastern time ian 8 a.m eastern time uh so think just backtrack uh you know when that is so uh, it's gonna be it looks like it's gonna be like 5 a.m here so Brother, I appreciate it, man. This has been awesome. I can't wait to get on that live and that Zoom. I mean, I think, man, I can't wait till we start doing some big things. I, I already see you, man. Like, I honestly, I don't have no words. Like, I, I see Ryan's already seen. Like, I'm like, uh, you know what? It, you know what this makes me feel like when I went into sales training, because I know there's a thing. There's one thing that I know, Mike. So if you look at my, when I take a when I when I took my personality test, which is the um, the, the predictive index, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that, that I've always been, so I came out as a maverick, right? Quote, unquote. I don't know if you're familiar with those. So I am not. Okay. So, so what it is, uh, maverick is like an action taker, a driver. My, my, my highest, my highest strength was driver, right? My lowest strength was being, was being, uh, uh, uh organized. That was my lowest strength. <laughs> like we're crazy salespeople, right? But what's crazy is that if I know there's something 
that is going to allow me to be better, to win, to make my family better, to make other people better. And I have that same feeling when I got into sales training, when I paid, I paid a lot of money. That's why when people ask me like how much I charge, they're like, let me show you how much I paid <laughs> to learn what I learned. Right. Yeah. Uh, this is the same feeling I have. I think we're going to do great things, brother. And I, and I think uh, we're going to kill it. I, I'm pretty sure we are. Yep. Yeah, man. I'm blessed. To, I'm, I'm uh, blessed absolutely. To no doubt. Sorry, Mike, give me a talk over you. Absolutely no doubt. Absolutely no doubt. And yeah, sentiment is the same, Mike. You know, we love you, bro. Love you. Love Max, man. This is just an awesome, awesome camaraderie that we got going. And like you said a few times already, we're just getting started. It's going to be crazy. Y'all need to jump on this rocket ship because it's taken off. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't get left in the dust. Either get on or get out of the way. Yep, yep. Awesome. Well, Mike, I really appreciate it. Um, there's one thing I really do. What I do on the show is before we end it, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to um, bring you off just for a little bit. Think about something. Think about one or two things that you can leave the people with as far as encouragement. You know, somebody that needs that extra push. Uh, and then I'll bring you back on and I'll have you end it. I will end the show that way. OK, so I'm going to bring you back on here in a minute. So think about something. Cool, guys. Amazing. Wow, man. I told you this was going to be a treat. Just wait. Just wait. Don't miss that sign up. Set your alarms. Put it on your calendars. Uh, if you need Ryan to wake you up at three in the morning, he'll do it. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm there. Let's go. Send him a, send, send Ryan a DM. Ryan, wake me up at three in the morning so I can uh, get on that Zoom call. And that way I can be part of it. So, um, again, Ryan, can you tell him a little bit? Uh, uh, there we go. Siri, put the alarm for 455. <laughs> uh, Ryan, can you let the people know really quick? Just remind them Friday. We also have a Zoom call. I, I, it's very important that I highlight that because I think you're going to bring the game. You're going to uh, uh, talk a couple of things. What are some what are those things that you're going to talk about, brother? Yeah, man, absolutely. So Friday, guys, three o'clock, 3 p.m. Arizona time on Zoom. Links in my on my story. I'll be put, posting it the rest of the week. We're going to go deep, dive deep into the mindset of today's buyer. What are they thinking? What do they want? How do you keep them from bypassing your deals? How do you get their attention? How do you stay in the forefront of their mind? How do you get them to buy your deal now? That's what we're going to be dropping on Friday. Don't miss it. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to try to bring as much energy as Mike uh, stealing a set high, but I think I got it. Let's go. Boom, baby. Don't miss that. And again, if you want to be part of my private Facebook group, we're doing a lot of huge things on there. Uh, send me a DM and I'll send you the link. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to bring Mike back on and let him uh, close the show. Yeah. So, uh, listen, the reason why I'm here is because there's a big hole in the education space. I understand that it can get extremely confusing. I can also understand that you can get kind of connected to uh, some of these strategies and get, you know, into analysis paralysis and shiny object syndrome. If there's one thing you should take away from today, it's that um, it's that if you're persistent, that I promise you it'll pay off. If you surround yourself with really good people, I promise you that you'll fast track yourself to success. And if you, work your ass off because there are no shortcuts, even though you might be able to get the shortcut and fast track your success. When you get around people, you still have to do the work. But I think what's going to separate me and the rest of the guys that you kind of surround yourself uh, with is that we truly want the best for you. And nobody here is going anywhere. So if you decide that you do want to get around guys like us, um, we're here forever. At least I'm here forever. Um, it's probably no surprise. I, uh, I love what I do and I wish you guys the best success. So reach out if you need me. Boom. Thank you everyone for joining us and have a good night. We can't add nothing more to that. Thank you, Mike.